Hello everyone, and welcome to my first Blender Game Video Tutorial Series, Part 7.5. In this part, we're going to add sounds and 2D filters to our game. This won't improve the gameplay, but it will sure make your game more enjoyable. But before we do that, I want to show you my splash screen, just so you know that I am using Blender 2.6, revision 42137. Okay. So first, let us say we want to add a sound when we collect this object. Well, you probably have guessed, the way to do that is by adding an actuator sound. Where is it? Here it is. And the way it works is that, first of all, you have to select which sound you want to use by pressing the open button. And I will use one of these sounds, let us say, plastic bottle. And then you have to choose the play mode, that is pretty much the same thing as for the animation. Then the volume and the pitch, that is the speed of the sound. You also have this 3D sound button here, that you can check, and then you will have all these options. But I haven't tested them yet, so we'll leave it off as it is by default. Okay, so this is all for creating a sound, very simple. However, if you were to connect this subject, this logic bricks, to the same controller that destroy your object, you won't be able to hear the sound. And the reason for that is that the moment the object dies, even if the sound is, is set to play end, it will die with the object. So what you, would uh, what you would have to do in order to create a sound that will play when this object is destroyed, is to create an object that will play a sound and this object will spawn the other object when it is touched. So as it might be a bit confusing right now, I will quickly do it. So first of all, we want to create an empty. That is pretty much an object that won't be rendered but can be used for multiple things. And we want this empty to always, in fact, it will be a trigger, play a sound. So, sound, and I'll select the plastic ball that I have used previously. And so, this object would, and we want it to be play end, so this object will play the sound completely whenever it is created. And what we want to do now is we want this object to create this object that will be called coin, uh, yeah, coin sound. And I'll also name this coin sound. And we want this object to create it. So to do that, we need to change the type of this logic brick to be from sound to be mm, edit object, edit object. And we want to let the edit object type to add object then we need to select what object, we, what object we want to create and we want to create an object that is called coin sound and this time here is the number of logic ticks or object will be alive before it is being destroyed and we want to delete it and let us say that this object the sound that we are playing in this object will stay 2 seconds as a duration of 2 seconds then since there is 60 logic ticks per second, we want the duration to be 120. Um, you could also set this linear velocity and angular velocity that will give an initial speed to your object, which will be useful if it, is, if it was a gun, for example, that were shooting projectiles. But since it is not important, I will leave them as they are. And the last thing we need to do except renaming this spawn sound is that we need to move this object to a layer that isn't used by the game engine so I'll press M and switch it to the last layer here I cannot really explain what it is that way but what you have to understand is that, is that everything that will be spawned in the game engine has to be on another layer it is true for sounds object, for munitions and for enemies Okay, and now if I start the game by pressing P and jump, it is working perfectly. And you cannot hear it, and this is because 
my screen recorder is unable to record the sound of my computer, but it is working. Okay, so that concludes the first part. Oh, in fact, no. Uh, I still have one thing to tell you, and it is that sounds are really hard to find on the internet. So what I have done is that I have found some interesting links that might help you find the sound you are searching for. And if on your side you have interesting links and good websites to find free sounds, please leave a comment telling me the website and I'll add it to the list in the video description so that it will help others to find what they need. Okay, so this concludes the first part. We can now move to the second part that was 2D filters. Now, first of all, what are 2D filters? Well, 2D filters are pretty much the same thing as the compositor for the re standard renderer. It is a way to affect the image once it is rendered by the Blender game engine. And to give you a quick example of what it can do, I'll add one by pressing Actuator Filter 2D, and I will enable this Filter 2D with a keyboard sensor that will be called Z, and look for the oops, and look for Z. Then uh, we have, oh, sorry, I have, I have to connect them. And then I will choose invert. For an example, press P. And you can see that everything is normal, but the moment I press Z, the colors inverse themselves. So this is how a 2D filter is working. It affects the, the image like the compositor. Now, you have it in the 2D filter logic brick, you have this 2D filter drop down menu, and you have this pass number. The pass number is pretty much the layer, it is the order the filters will be applied. And if you wanted to remove a 2D filter, you would have to select, to select remove filter and select the pass of the filter you want to remove. Now, that said, most of the filters here aren't really useful. Um, they are standard modifications you can do to an image, but they won't give you a result that you can really use for a game itself. So most of the time what you will do is that you will use a custom filter. Like this one. And what is a custom filter? Well, a custom filter is a 2D filter that someone has coded in Python. And for this example, I have a filter that is called Bloom. And this filter was made by someone called Goren on Blender Artist that is also on YouTube. And what is really great with this filter is that Goren has explained it in all detail on how to create it and how it is working. And as you can see, if I open my text editor, then zoom on a bit, you can see that the filter is not that complicated, is not that long, a few lines only. And I will link the video of Goran that explains how he made it in great detail. So if you are interested in making your own 2D filters, I definitely recommend you to watch it. And I will also start the game engine to do, let you see what it does. So press P, nothing happened, press Z. And we now have this kind of blurry bloom light effect. Um, lastly, there is one filter that I want to talk to you before we finish this video, and it is the motion blur filter. I don't really know why, but the motion blur filter has no pass. So what you have to do is you have to press enable or disable. If enable is dark gray like this one, it will enable the motion blur, and if it is light gray like this one, it will disable it. And also you have to select a value, and usually a value of 0.8 gives something nice. Now this will be probably too blurry for my screen recorder, but you can, if you try it at home, you can see that it is working nicely. So. This is all for the second part of this tutorial, and this is all for this video also. So I hope you have enjoyed it, that you have learned something from it. 
I wish you a great day and I'll see you in part 8. Goodbye!